Hello and welcome again. In this video, we'll discuss the verification algorithm for the Elgamal signature scheme. Now, in the last video, we talked about the not the verification, but the process of signing the message. So in this case, this is from the point of view of, of Alice. That's the one that's going to check whether or not the signature is, is valid. So let's recall in general what is the verification uh, process. So once uh, Bob has sent the message with the signature, so the verification process, what it does is going to take the message and the signature, which in this case is going to be uh, that pair of numbers, and it takes a public key, which in this case is going to be the public key that is from here from that was published uh, from Bob and the verification algorithm what it does it just tells you true or false true if the signature corresponds to the message and false if it doesn't all right so let's look at what is the actual process of the verification algorithm for the Elgamal so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna compute the value this value that is here we take B to the R times R to the S uh, modulo P. Now, this B that is here is part of the public uh, key. R was part of the signature and S was also part of that signature. And P is um, is the uh, public uh, modulus in this case of the public P. So if you recall here, let me just write that down over here. Uh, the public key in this case will be a triple which is uh, P the prime number alpha which is the generator and the number B which is done with uh, modular exponentiation that's the public key and the actual signature that is sent to the insecure channel if you can see here this signature is actually a pair of numbers which is R and S and that's what we saw in the previous example that's how we so there's a way to compute the R and the S and we did that in the previous example so we'll come back to the values in the previous example and you will see what it is. The public key is uh, here an input of the verification algorithm, which is all, the, all of these things that we will use. And the output, of course, will be true or false, depending on whether this pair of numbers correspond to the signature or not. All right, so, so that B here that you saw there for the computation is this exactly the same B that is here in the public uh, key and R and S are part of the signature R and S here, and then you add modulo P. And then what you do is you're gonna compare this number that you got here to alpha to the N, where alpha, remember, is part of the public key. That alpha, if you recall that, that is a generator of CP star, and M here is the message, the message that was received uh, together with the signature, this is the message, and that's the signature, and all that was to the insecure channel. Now, if t, this number, happens to be equal to this uh, modular exponentiation here, then the output of the algorithm is true. What that means is the actual signature, corres that signature corresponds to the actual message that was sent. And if this is not the case, then false means that the signature is not uh, valid, or it does not correspond to that message. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the example we did in the in the first video and if you haven't watched that example i'll suggest you go back and and see it so, so this will, uh, will make sense to you so the example is with small numbers the numbers that we had from the previous example and if you recall that the public key is p alpha and b in that example from video one the first part it was uh, p was 541 alpha was 128 and b was 239 and the message that was sent was uh, 95. That was the message. And the signature that we got from the uh, previous example and the previous video, it was the pair of numbers RS with R is 280 and S is 65. That is the signature. So the verification process is done by, by Alice in this case. So the verification process, as we mentioned in the algorithm, is going to be computing this B to the R time, times R to the S modulo P B here is part of the public key, and the public key B here is 239. So I'm going to have 239 to the R, but R here is 280 
times 280 because that's R to the 65 and the 65 is because that's S and this is all modulo the prime number which is 541 now if you do the modular exponentiation here what you can do is you take this number 239 to the 280 modulo 541 you place that answer right here in this case this modular exponentiation gives you 15 in a similar way 280 to the 65 modulo 541 gives you 480 and then you go ahead and multiply these two numbers and then you take the modulus uh, 441 from there and then you get this number 167 now you can double check this in a computer java or you can actually also use wolfram alpha to do all these verifications now the next thing is i'm going to compare this t that is here to alpha the generator to the message modulo the prime number and if they happen to be the same then that means that the signature is valid alpha in this case is 128 let me scroll all the way up here so you can see this is alpha 128 scroll all the way down and this is right here 128 to the m m is the message which is in this case 95 and this is modulo the prime you get 167 which is exactly the same number that it is here so be, since alice is doing this and alice says okay this number is equal to this then this signature is valid and the message was sent by bob or anyone in possession of bob's private key so so this is the case then the signature is valid now now this process uh, that i have here in the algorithm you go through this variable t you don't actually have to do that um uh, create a new variable the only thing you have to do is just compare b to the r times r to the s which is the value of t uh, to alpha to the n modulo p and if they happen to be the same that's a uh, valid signature the only reason we do it in the steps is to make it a little bit easier but if for example you were to implement this in a program you don't actually have to define a new variable t to just verify the the signature so if this is satisfied then then the signature is valid so that's basically the uh, the the verification algorithm. It's not it's not complicated. It's only two steps. Actually, the signing process of the Elgamal is a little bit more involving. The verification process is just if you look at it, it's just uh, modular exponentiations, and you just compare them. That's basically what this is because B, R, and S, and Alpha, and M, and P are all known to Alice because she received that message with the signature. Actually, they are known to, to everyone who is listening to the channel. Anyone could even actually check the value of the signature as long as, of course, this is all sent in plain sight, which is not, could not be, cannot be the case if you are actually implementing this in real life. Remember, what I said earlier is the message and the signature, they have to be encrypted before you actually send uh, that message. So let's talk about a little bit of the computational aspects of, of the signature. Now, one of the things that made me worrisome for some reason is that the numbers R and S, which are the part of the signature, they have roughly the same length, bit length of P. So in our sample, the sample we have, P is 541, which is 10 bits. Um, R and S, which are part of our, our signature, that is 280, which is 9 bits. And S is 65, which is 7 bits. Um, so the total length of the package, and by package I mean the, the information that is being sent through the channel, is the message R and S. This is about three times as long as the original message M. So that's one of the things that you have to kind of worry about if you are concerned about the length of the packages. Then... Uh, using the Elgamal will make the transmission three times as large as the original intended. Now, one way in, you, in which you can speed up the process, and this is gonna be on the side of Bob, is Bob can do certain pre-computation, so he can actually just uh, save some time so if, if you wanna trade off storage by time. So, Bob, 
it doesn't matter what message it is and it doesn't matter um, uh, what you're gonna send here so he, he can always uh, pre-compute and store both the ephemeral key and the value of R and let's recall why is that so what is the signing process if you recall from the first uh, from the first video is you choose a random ephemeral key which is something that Bob chooses in such a way that the greatest common divisor between the ephemeral key and P minus one is one so when he chooses that then he can just store it the R is part of the signature, but once the ephemeral key is computed, then the R is completely determined. So it's just this uh, generator to the ephemeral key modulo P. So this is pre-computed. Now S cannot be pre-computed in this case. And the reason for that is because S depends on the message. So if you change the message, S is gonna change. R and the ephemeral key does not, do not change with the message. Now, of course, you have to be worried about using the same ephemeral, ephemeral key for every message, but this is one way you can save uh, some time by pre-computing the ephemeral key and S. So that's basically all I have to say uh, from now in this video. So in the next video, we'll talk about some other uh, aspects of the El Gamal signature scheme. So let's stop the video now, and I will see you in the next video.